Hello there, my name is Jordan Leroy Hansen, also known as LeDev, and I'm here to provide you a card deck uh, deck deck. Which in this case, we try to make a deck that I really wanted to try to brew quite in a while. Which is using cards like Danifa, Capuchon, Paragon. Which is First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, Auras, and Equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast. So I was thinking, maybe we can try something like an Enchant Control deck. And that's kind of what I decided to do. Now, obviously, we have all the annoying control ores, such as Compulsory Rest, Seal Way as a two of, Trespasses Curse, since it is an aura, and then also 40, well, no, these don't matter because they're enchantments, but we're going to get to the ones that do matter. Then there's stuff like Torment of Scarabs. I put a Giant's Last Stand in there against discard meta. It's more of a test than anything else, but also protects Dianifa, so that's a test. We also have stuff like Leonon Ward Leader as kind of a way of just pretty much help us gain consistent life leak with one of our cards that we have in here as a one of for we split an angel. But mostly the main components of this deck is just pretty much try to control with ores and see what happens. I also decided to put one SRAM in here since I have it as a one of. Just because I figured it could be just a semi draw spell with the current iteration. We also have Luminous Bonds as another control base aura. And that's kind of the deck. Nightly Valier is just used to either attach to Danifa or even Leon Ward Leader to make it intimidating and such. And honestly, I don't know how this deck is going to do. If you're wondering why I seem a little, like, exhausted, it's because I got done with my first day of work, so... I'm trying to do a deck tech video so I can keep with the schedule. So far, it's doing good. Like, I got the Hearthstone video ready for tomorrow, so now we just got to do this. So, let's try, uh, not Pox, Enchant Control. There we go. Both in the Ores of Colors. And let us try some shenanigans, shall we? Let's see. Now we just wait for the classic loading. There we go. And we're going against Rat no, Ratol, Rat, Ratol. Well, this opponent. Okay, so the opponent's going first, so we gotta keep that in mind. Mostly I'm trying this deck out since I noticed that a majority of the meta has been kind of creature-centric unless you go against the once-in-a-blue-moon control deck. But yeah, mostly it's either tribal synergistics or just standard red-green ramp shenanigans. So I figured trying to chant control might be something that's worth a shot. Yeah, we've got transport. So that's good. Actually, this is just kind of perfect. Sure, Johnny's Welcome is kind of mute, but uh, hey, it's still an iteration on the deck. It kind of synergizes with Leonon War Leader, so that's kind of the main reason why I put this in as a two of, if I recall correctly. So let's take a look what he's playing. So he looks like he stick to six cards, or he's still looking at his hand and being like, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. So yeah, he keeps his hand. He scries on the top, so this should be an interesting match. I play the swamp and then isolated chapel. Yeah, swamp, isolated chapel, then trespasses curse. So he's playing blue, so theoretically it could be a control deck. It could also be a token blue white deck, or a god pharaoh's gift deck, or a scarab god control deck. Looks like mono blue though. So this smells like a control deck, which. Uh, this is going to be... Okay. Oh! He's anticipating. That's actually perfect for us, because then we can actually put down a Trespasser's Curse. If so, if he has any realm of creature-based synergies, we at least negate it for a minute. Now, it's not saying that this is a creature deck, but still, this is just good just to be safe. Plus, it helps us gain life, which synergizes with other cards in the deck. 
Honestly, I should probably put a Johnny's Pride main in here upon post reflection. Uh, we'll probably edit that after this, uh, after we play with this deck for this match. Because that's actually an interesting thought. Best passes curse guys with a Johnny's Pride mate. Sort of. That is a thought. Okay. I think what I'm gonna do here is try to get Danifa out, knowing that I might be in for a counter spell. And that's kind of the point here. We want him to think, oh, I can get the counter spell out, and then he can't play a spell. Do 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 do. But mostly we're just here to try to fish out his counter spells. When you go against control decks like this, there's some times where you just have to, unfortunately, play into the counter spell. You just have to be like, well, speaking of counter spell, there we go, disallow. You just kind of have to play into it and try to keep the spells you want to attach to him to there. So, here's my plan is probably to fish out in a Giant's Welcome and Tragic Poet and another Trespasser's Curse. Both coincidentally one cost spells with a two cost spell. Try to fish out his counter magic. That way, then we can put Torment of Scarabs, which this card pretty much kills control. Torment of Scarabs is obnoxious. So, first things first, I'm going to fish out with a Torment of Scarabs, or Trespass's Curse. He probably just will let it through because he's like, eh, this doesn't bother me. He might try to counter it, it's a legitimate. Maybe, but I would be surprised. Because this does look like just your standard blue-white control shenanigans. So he does. We'll decline. Okay. A Johnny's Pride. A Johnny's Welcome. And I'm just going to put this out. There we go. So we got some life. We fished out at least one spell, but the problem is he did make the mistake of using two. Hard one. We could risk Torment Scallops next turn. We could also just play another Giant's Welcome. He probably thinks we're a life gain deck or something. He might just try to counter the other Giant's Welcome, and then we try to go off with the Torment of Scarabs. Making the technical teeny little bit of a presumption that we will get a land. On the other side of the coin, though, we could just play Torment of Scarabs. It gets countered. We're like, oh no, it got countered, and then just use Tragic Poet to bring it back. That's also a possibility as well, especially if you use this as a allow. So we could also, you know what? Actually, I think that's the better play here. Target the player. And ask him if he has his counter magic. And the minute he tries to remove Tragic Poet, we sacrifice it to return Torment of Scarabs if this gets countered. That seems to be the game plan here. He's thinking. Usually when they're paused like that, they do have responses, so it's safe to say that he does have counter magic. He's thinking. He's thinking. Also, one thing. The one thing that probably saves aura control decks is Tragic Poet. Tragic Poet kind of saves this deck. Quite a lot, actually. So I'm not going to attack with it because I do want to hold it as security if he has any removal type magic. But the best part is we did got this down. So technically speaking, he's in a pickle. Because control decks, one thing you did not want control decks do not want is losing cards. And this curse torment of scarabs makes you lose cards very and if he decides to keep his cards, he loses life, which is, well, positive to our overall win condition. So, we'll see. He might also have a bounce spell, such as Disperse or the four-cost one that you can 
Plus, we can disperse. So, yeah. In turn... So, chances are he either has multiple disperses in his hand, or he just tried to draw into a counterspell. We didn't saw him have a counterspell on this first one. Still... Okay, show me you have counter magic. No, you don't. Fair enough. No attackers. So now you're gonna have to lose a card. And look like my puppies are barking at the family members coming back to the house. So if you hear that, notice just puppies wanting to say welcome. Goes to his draw step. Now, to be fair, he could have Teferi in his deck, which seems to be the case since he's playing blue-white. And he might just uh, allow that so he can play his Teferi and then just put this on the third, the second from top. Hopefully draw into more counter magic, which lucky enough then we have still spells to interact with, such as Ganepa, Bugler, Giant's Welcome. So we have interaction, even if he tries to counter the Torment Scarabs. He just goes with hard counter. Okay. Since you're going to do that, we're going to try to return this. There is a chance he might disallow it, which he doesn't have. So, that is good. Because then all we have to do is play that. Play Tormented Scarabs. It's safe to say this game is pretty much on the end I mean, you should never get coffee on games like this, especially with dirty league games like this, because there's always a chance of a turnover. But we're in a good position. Like, we have enough roll based auras and such that have minimal life gain and such. And if he does have any creatures, we negate it with the Trespasses Curse a little bit. No, seriously, why did I not put a Johnny's, uh, Johnny's Pride Maid in this deck? Oh, yeah, we got to see his blessing. Oh, okay. First things first. We play the Boogaloo. We'll trigger the Johnny's Welcomes. Nothing, so we end the search. Then we play our good old friend, Denifa. Yep, a Johnny's Triggers. Let's see. Does he lose the life or discard a card? He's thinking on it. If people are wondering with this deck why I don't have more Srams in it, it's because I don't have that many rare wild cards, so I can't brew Srams. I'd probably put it in as a 2 or 3 of in this deck, but currently the reason why it's only as a 1 of is because of that specific uh, catch-22, which... Yeah, it does make the drawing engine of this deck kind of mute. Wait, what did he discard? Okay, I'm going to feel bad if this is a beginner's deck. Oi. Well, we attack. Honestly, let's see what he does. If he casts a spell, mostly at the end of the turn, since we don't have any spells, we might need a fatal push something. The keyword is might. But most likely, we're going to, when it gets to our turn, draw a card at the end of the turn using Arch of Araska. Arch of Araska. Pretty much the quintessential card for a majority of control decks. Helps you dig into your deck, and a majority of control decks, especially like decks like Turbo Fog. Or approach of the second sun, they like to dig in their decks a lot. Wait, what? Oh, okay. 
I'm gonna draw a card. So he's playing from what it looks like. Pretty much a metallurgic summonings. I use counter magic to get more units on the battlefield. Which makes Fatal Push a lot more useful. So he's probably he probably has fumigate in hand which then makes that into a 5-5 five five, which is a little bit obnoxious but we have fatal push and fatal push pretty much kills any of these tokens so let's see what it does Oh, he figured out that Torment of Scarabs can be count- The activated ability is, is an activated ability, or- Nice! Actually, a proper use of Disallow. Or Triggered Ability, since it is a Triggered Ability. Well, in that case... I will kill that token. But yeah, that was all, so you don't have to discard anything. Draw your card. I will draw a card since I know you don't kill your cards in your deck. And hey, we got one of our victory conditions. And we don't and we know he doesn't have counter magic, so So he has to now discard a card unless he wants to lose the game. I'm pretty sure unless he has a really clever trick up his sleeve, we got this. He's thinking. I would say it's best to discard a card now, especially if he has a few kid in hand. That way it kind of negates my strategy for a little bit. So yeah, he discards a... This club carrot. Okay. So if he has that fumigate, he needs to use it now. Does that vigilance? I also just seal away. Do a... Settle wreckage. That's a possibility I have to keep in mind. Well, there's the Teferi. Sorry, I'm late. I'm going to guess he's minusing to Tuck. Even if he plays the Teferi, that's still game. Well, that's game. Okay, one game down. One more to go before we end this video. A oh, nice cries. So, I'm going to make one little alteration to the deck that I kind of want to test out. I want to keep a giant last stand in there. Nightly Valor could probably be cut out for this test. Captured by the console that I still want to test. On Sarah's Wings just good. Could probably cut out a Johnny's last stand since it's very situational. And one Luminous Bonds, just so that we can put in, as a test, three of Johnny's Pride Mates. So yeah. Call this the silly iteration of the deck, so let's test this out. And we are statistically likely going to go against another blue-white player since it seems like all the people who play in blue-white always play the Teferi emblem. Which, honestly, for professional players who want to be very, very competitive, don't try to forecast your deck. Like, I understand it's kind of cool to have, like, the Teferi emblems, the Teferi sleeves and such, or, like, the Shaman sleeves or such, 
or whatever card that's in your deck, or have the Yawgmoth's Vile Offering playback. Trust me, I understand. But do keep in mind that it does cost you kind of forecasting your deck a little bit, so keep that in mind, and boy, that's not a great hand. Get a Mogan down a little bit more. We have a push. And that's about it. I think we're going to have to keep, unfortunately. Do I ever keep... Okay. There's an argument to keep Saram on top since it is technically our draw engine. If we draw planes, that will be a two-drop. In all instances, I should put this on the bottom. But I think this is one of the rare instances where putting it on the top is a lot more logical. Not always, but... Okay, so he's black. So we know he's not black-green, so... Constrictor? Oh yeah, we're killing that. This card, if you let it go off, it's absurd. Oh boy. I might have to actually make a third game, because this game might be short, because of land rot. But yeah, he's playing black-green shenanigans. Look like black-green explore. Oh, hey, we got a card. Okay, we'll play Saram. And if we draw land, we could actually Luminous Bonds and draw a card and actually get that engine to go off. So black-green, I'm guessing it's explore. It could also just be black-green reanimator, which is a technical archetype that people can try at. Hey. Okay. Well, look like we wouldn't even get away with it even if we wanted to. Okay, this is potentially... Yeah, it's Black Green Explorer. Uh, this might be a short game, but not... Well... So much of me wants to play Danapa now. But I think the realistic here is to negate this guy's explore triggers because when he explores it's not going to be fun like that so if we do get another land we do actually contest captured by the consulate yep your standard explore deck so yeah ow Yeah, I think I'm just going to do the other Luminous Bonds real quick, because we really need to negate the damage flow. Especially since we don't have any of our life gain magic. I think it's almost tempted to if we get the life, which we do, so... I think we'll play the Danifa out just now. That way, if he doesn't have an answer to it, we can actually turn next turn play Capture the Consulate just for some shenanigans. But statistically speaking, he might remove it. I said statistically. I didn't say realistically. But on the other hand, oh wait, yeah, he has that, so he has. When you get all your components together, this deck can be a little bit obnoxious. Still, not a bad deck. It's actually a really well-designed deck, all things considered. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Lucky enough for not really an attack deck unless we go flying, so really we're just using this to fish out removal.
This has actually been a lot more dynamic than I thought it was going to be. Especially with how our lands were. Our lands were pretty, pretty bad. Okay, we actually have some plays here. So, definitely going to play this. We can dig for some more stuff. Specifically, enchantments. Uh, but mostly, best case scenario, it's used as a semi blocker against the 2 3. And chances are now he's going to probably explore with the Tomb Raider. He gets to discard a card and such, but it does work as a semi removal spell. It doesn't. Okay. forgot about that ability. <laughs> okay, we got saved by captured by the consulate. <laughs> Have fun with a giant 910 that can't it's <laughs> Okay, that's actually a highlight video. I almost thought a minute there we were screwed, but it turns out we were saved by captured by the consulate. Wow. Okay. Maybe if you have enchantment based enchantment, I want to grow stuff up in your meta. This card's actually decent. Not great, but decent. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is hilarious. Now, we're definitely going to let the damage just go through and. Because we would rather have a trump blocker, especially since we're at the moment that. Hey, a minute. What's our graveyard looking like? All creatures. So, we're mostly going to use Tragic Poet as a jump blocker. Oh my gosh, though. Prodigious Crow. <laughs> On Chupacabra, because he's forced to because capture the concert. No, to be fair, Prodigious Growth on Tomb Raider is nasty. That's actually a pretty good finisher combo, I have to admit. Okay, so he does some murdering. He seems to forget about that ability of capturing the consulate. There we go. Returns those stuff to the graveyard. And the best part is... You know what the best part is? Here's the best part. So yeah, now he eviscerates. We're still going to take the damage, believe it or not. And the main reason why is... Even though we're going to be at one health, which is not great... It's because... Thank you. Now, are we still dead? Actually, upon postal perfection, what I should have done is actually just chump blocked with one of the two threes and then did that because we don't have any lands. Okay, that was a legitimate misplay on my part, but still. To be fair, this game was a lot more dynamic than it was going to be, so. Oh, wait, we do have two lands. Oh, I did math wrong. So we actually still have a chance here. Presuming he doesn't play any life loss spells. Okay, so he attacks. Attacks with his sire. He'd say no. And unless he has a blossoming defense, we pretty much win. There is a chance he top decked it, so. Okay. We actually. Ah, I wish there was a thanks option here. Because it's always nice when people compliment good plays. Well, now we just gotta wait for a creature to put on Sarah's wings onto. This game's still not over. Let me put that frank, because there is a good chance he put Naturalize in there to count against Artifact Hate and Enchantments. The minute he draws Naturalize, we are not exactly in a good spot. Let me put it like that. Yeah, it's safe to say after this match, I'll probably, can't, I'll probably end the video, because this match actually is a lot more... 
dare we say it, a lot more surprisingly twist and turny than I thought it was going to be. Because still, like I said, the minute he top decks any enchantment removal whatsoever, we are legitimately dead. So this is tense. This is the matter of, can I top deck a creature? Can I top deck a creature? Can I please top deck a creature? It's kind of funny and tense the more I think about it. Okay. Now it's pretty much saying, please top deck a creature now or you're going to die. Okay, so he does the first score. He does the second score. I'm going to keep that on top for obvious reasons. Okay, so we absolutely 100% need to top deck a creature. If we don't, we are dead. Yes! We top decked the creature. Okay, first things first. Play that. We play our Johnnies at the Pride of the Mates. And then we play on the wings of Sarah. Well, on Sarah's ring, but still. Yes! We actually have a way to defend ourselves for at least a semi turn unless we pull another creature. In theory, or another control enchantment to counter the one creature he's going to draw. And this game is a lot more tense than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so he does his first explore trigger. Gets a land. Which then helps trigger Wild Growth Walker to get a counter. So then, now in theory, he might try to do his remove. Oh my gosh! <laughs> this game is amazing! Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Well, as far as I'm aware, this doesn't give it vigilance. Oh, wait, it does have vigilance. So, yeah, I think we have to swing in. Which then triggers the Johnny Pride Mate, which. Okay! Take action, yes. Okay, it turns out a giant's pride mate with on Sarah's ween is kind of absurd. For some people who probably did this in Core 19 draft, they were probably saying, well, yeah, but still. Okay, we gotta be careful of this. So, the best thing we do is we need to draw either another creature or another control enchantment. Because the thing of the matter is, okay, now he's murdering his own thing, so. He's tired of his removal not being effective. So yeah, change the target to a chain of creature of able. Changes it. So, probably one of the better draws we could do is maybe Tragic Poet and not use it automatically. Well, the problem is any creature, no matter what, we're gonna have to use as a jump blocker, no matter which way you no matter which way you toss it. Nevertheless, though, we are at least going to be in the range of... Okay, hello. First things first. Combat. Back. Nevertheless, we're still going to be in life range of 8, and it's going to be increasing ever further the, long, the longer this stays on the battlefield. So, nevertheless, I think it's safe to say we're in a solid board state. So then now we play this target him which now since he's in a matter of top decking okay i spend way too much meta on that but we don't have any cards on hand so kind of mute but nevertheless he's now in a state where he has to either sacrifice his permanence which he's probably going to since most of them are enchanted well he has to it's either he sacks or lose life and chances are he's just going to sack a permanent he can't play Probably the Jungle Creeper, since he can return it to his hand. Yep. Yeah, it's all that. It's returned to hand, right? Yeah, graveyard to hand. So he turns it to hand, and then he can play that, which... Yeah, that still makes this match not over just yet. He draws a land. He 
does the trick the explore trigger it's safe to say this game is definitely not over oh boy that was not a draw we needed It's still not technically dead, though. Put the counter on. And then now he's probably going to sacrifice either Wild Girl Flocker or a Vanguard. One of the two. He might also just psych. Just. Okay, so yeah, he's removing pretty much the stuff that got enchanted. I guess that is the one con of Torment of Scarabs and Enchantment Control. Yeah, it synergizes with Danova very well. But if you go into early game with having a bunch of stuff removed thanks to control spells, they pretty much are given a Zat target. Oh, crap. Well. Yeah, we're kind of forced to block it, aren't we? Are we? Well, hang on. Let's do the math here. So let's say we let it go through. That's about damage. We have three. We can attack, taking us to nine. And then, actually, it sounds crazy, but we're taking the damage. I know this sounds crazy, but hear me out on this. The thing is, we really need the increase in life gain, no matter which way we toss about it. Plus, that doesn't hurt. But yeah, we can. We do need the ever increasing life gain in this deck. Plus, it's our aggressive aggro strategy to help us with the Torment of Scarab sub strategy. So, what I'm saying is, long story short, we can still survive for another turn, is what I'm saying. So then now we'll let it go for that. So now he has to either lose life or sack stuff. Chances are he's going to sacrifice the Wild Wolf Walker. That's no sweat about that. What else does he sack? So he does sacrifice the Squire. Hey there. Uh, just doing a little stream thing here. So you have a good night's sleep. Okay. Gotta appreciate family. Okay, so explores. Okay. So now we pretty much don't have a choice. We have to block or we are dead. But on the bright side, on the bright side, we do get the life gain. No matter which way we toss it. So, yeah. So, yeah. We have to unfortunately block now. Sad, but... At the minimal, we're just going to be dealt three points of damage, and we do get the life gain, so we're going to be... Life gain of seven. We're going to be at 13 life. Which, technically, if we were playing still in the Shadow of Innistrad's Bach, he could just play a Trish Deck of Phobia, and I would probably be dead. <laughs> but lucky enough, we are not in the Shadows of Innistrad meta, so we don't have to worry about Trish Deck of Phobia. But we need a control-based enchantment now. We need anything. I mean, it's something? I guess. It's not what we want, but we'll take it. Okay, so now he's going to probably sacrifice the Deadeye Tracker and the Wild Grove Walker. Really, the only way we die now is if he has another stat buff, which something tells me he has about either two or three of these in his deck. 
I'm gonna guess two due to the high cost, so maybe this is the last one he has in his deck. So if he does top deck a third one, we are dead on the spot. Wow, this game was a lot more dynamic than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I sound like a broken record, don't get me wrong, it's just... Seriously, I thought I was dead the first few turns of this game, but turns out... I made a surprising comeback. Which is going to make a very nice video, I'll say that right off the bat. <laughs> Okay, he's either choosing or he conceded. I can't tell which. He's thinking. No matter which way he does it, he has to sacrifice a non-land permanent. Or he loses free life. He's probably thinking that he probably just will sack this and just get this for the extra point of damage. Because that is probably the best play for him to do. He's thinking on this. Conceded that. It's either thinking or he conceded. It's one or the other. I hope it's he's thinking because this game's been a legitimate blast, actually. What are you going to do, opponent? What are you going to do? He's either in deep thought mode, or he's went to get a drink. Or he conceded. Maybe he... What do they call the term these these kids say these days? He F12, F6, whatever it is. That's a possibility. is definitely using all his timeouts. Like, he has about two left? He has two timeouts left. I hope this... Come to think of it, I hope it ain't one of those players that tries to prolong this game just because he wants me to see that is the case, I find that motive a little bit jerky. A little bit. Just a little bit. And the thing is, he's still got this game, if that's the case. Because, yeah, he might have to sack this, he might have to sack this. But still, he can attack it with this, get free, and I have to top deck. If I don't top deck, he wins. So, I really hope this is just him, like, taking a five-minute break or just getting a drink or something. Because if he's intentionally doing this... Well, let's just say this is the reason why the timeout system's in place. Let me put it like that. Because, yeah, there are times where you need a break, where you need a few minutes, but... If this system wasn't implemented, this this lobby system would be trolled very easily by people like the Dirtle. And I don't mean like Dirtle, like how some people like to have a friendly conversation to a game of Magic. I mean Dirtling in the sense that there's some people... Will, Dirtle a game of magic because they want to hopefully, you hopefully concede before them, and hopefully then they get the win. And for the record, for people who are trying to rank in any game, like Magic or Hearthstone or that, for the love of God, don't be that guy. That's not really cool. That's wasting an opponent's time, and yes, you're wasting someone else's time, a player that's trying to have fun with the game. It's just... If it wasn't the fact I'm putting this on YouTube, I don't really want to say any offensive language terms, but it's very jerkish. I'll say that. 
I kind of want to use some more stronger words, but... Oh, he conceded. Okay. So, that lecture got done. So, don't dirtle. He probably just f sits, maybe. Nevertheless, so... Quick, so, that was... We used that time, at the very least, to make a quick lecture. So, anyway. We'll open this pack real quick, and we'll end the video. If we open prodigious growth, I'll kind of chuckle. No, but a card that I am kind of tempted to make a deck out of eventually. I still have to figure out what to do with it, but who knows? That'll probably be another deck tech video in the future. But yeah, overall, we'll go back to the deck real quick. Just to show it off. This is enchant control. You can make your own little edits to the deck if you want. This is my iteration of the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay, and hopefully this is something to inspire you to play at your local Friday Night Magic to do some shenanigans. Overall, I hope you have a lovely day, and this is Glove Death, signing out.